Model Making Guru is sponsored by emodels.co.uk, your one-stop shop for all your model making needs. emodels.co.uk, make something awesome. Hang on, model up there, there, words. Hey everyone, it's Fox from Model Making Guru here. Hello and welcome to part two of our build of the HG Buster Gundam with no airbrush activity whatsoever. Now, if you remember in the last episode, I'd uh, put the legs together and uh, glooped the seams. You can see now, these have now been completely sanded and reprimed and they're looking pretty darn spanky. Now, I do have a little bit of a seam line still left there. It seems to be, I've not sanded it fully. I had real trouble getting to that bit to sand it without taking all the paint off here and without really affecting this nice crisp line so it's kind of still there but i'm happy with that because it looks more like a panel line because there's no seam line here you can kind of get away with that and say it's a panel line like maybe these two bits on the sides are just clunked on so i have no problem with that there's still a seam line here but again i don't really care because that's going to be covered up by the kneecap so you're not going to see that so that was all sanded down uh, i masked off the steel parts and then reprimed it uh, you can see here the steel is not quite as shiny as it was before. That's probably because I've been handling it. But once it's been gloss varnished and we do all that other stuff, it'll come back. And we'll do other things to it, so don't worry too much. I just needed to get the basic colour down uh, in the leg. So, what is next? The next step now is the painting. -ing 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 -ing. I'll go and get everything ready. Um, you will need your paints. I'm going to be using Citadel paints. You can use whatever uh, water-based acrylic paints you want. They're going to be best for brush painting. Don't use Tamiya paints. You can brush paint them, but unless you get the mix exactly right and you're super careful, they're going to look like gash. Uh, you can use your Vallejo game colours or whatever whatever water-based paints you like, but I'm using the Citadel ones. So if you've got some, follow along. Uh, and a couple of other bits, but I'll get everything ready and I'll tell you what we're going to do and what you need. So, back in a moment. Okay, right, let's get cracking. We're going to start off first with the green. I'm going to paint this part, which is the back of the sort of torso. Uh, now, what we're going to use for this is Castellan Green, which is a kind of murky, grimy, algae green colour. None of these colours are spot on exact, but we can play with filters and shades and things later on to change the colours a little bit. Uh, but we're going to use Castellan Green. Now, uh, I'm going to use a number of brushes. Now, I'm going to be using Citadel brushes, but you don't have to use Citadel brushes. Um, I'm going to, to colour this part, which is basically a big flat rectangle. I'm going to use the large base brush. It's a flat chisel edge brush and it's nice and soft. I did try, I have tried painting big flat areas with the normal round end brushes. This is a shade and a layer brush, but they tend to give you more brush marky areas. They're good for painting into smaller areas, but for big flat open things like this, you want to try and get it as smooth as possible. And I found that the base brushes are quite good for this. So if you haven't got the Citadel brushes, don't worry. If you don't like the Citadel brushes or whatever, it's fine. Um, just try using a, a soft flat brush, either chipped like that, tipped, sort of chisel tipped, or just flat. You might find it works better for big flat areas. I'm also going to be using something that isn't compulsory, but you may find a good idea. I'm going to be using my wet palette. Um, now I've shown how to make a wet palette. If you don't know what a wet palette is, you've never heard of one, you don't have anything like it, don't worry, just use whatever you're using to mix the paints on, you know, a piece of plastic or card or whatever, you know, an old kitchen tile, whatever you're using. However, if you've got chance, make yourself a wet palette. It's just basically a way of keeping the paint moister and, and hydrated for longer so you can work with it, you can mix colours easier and you'll actually use less paint. This has been in here for about two hours and it's still completely usable. So if you're interested, go and watch that first. This will cost you literally pounds. It won't cost you much at all. It's a, it's a sandwich tub, some kitchen roll, a bit of um, parchment paper and some water and that's it. Take you 10 minutes to make it once you've got all the bits and uh, it'll just make your life much easier. So if you can make a wet palette, do it, because they're brilliant. Uh, trust me on that, just trust your Uncle Fox. Now, we're going to paint the first part, and there's no way for me to do this without saying thin your paints and use two thin coats. I can't not do that, because it's, it's, it's true. So what we're going to do, we're going to paint it on. Now, the worst thing you want to do is just take paint from the pot and splop it on. You can't control how much paint you put on the model, how much you get on your brush, and you're putting too much on, it's going to be thick and gloopy and obscure details and give you brush marks. You always want to thin the paint a little bit. So when you get your paint on your palette, like in here, get the paint on the palette, uh, just 
touch of water and mix that in and it'll just thin it a little bit because that's what you want it's better to put on multiple thin coats of paint that look a bit gash at first and build it up than slap loads of just raw paint on there and it just becomes complete nonsense so i've actually mixed a little bit of water in uh, it's a little bit thin so i'm just gonna get a little bit of water on my brush tiny amount really not much at all and all we're going to do is get some paint going now when you're getting paint onto your brush don't let paint go further up than halfway if you're going to be mixing colors use an old crappy brush don't get paint further up than halfway up the brush because that will eventually knack your brush it'll get caught in the ferrule and all we're going to do is use this brush and just very lightly brush it over and hopefully it'll be in focus uh, now you notice here i'm being reasonably careful i'm going quite carefully i'm trying to keep it in i'm not dabbing I'm not scraping away with the brush. I'm just working the color across the surface. Now you will notice, as I get more paint on the brush, you will notice it looks kind of pap. It looks all streaky and horrible and rubbish and you'd be like, wow, that's a terrible paint job. Don't panic. The first one or two coats will always look complete arse because the paint is a little bit thinned because you're doing it correctly. And even though this is a base color, uh, Citadel base colors are quite opaque. Even though it's a base color, you probably still get the streakiness. Now don't say, don't worry about it. Just get the paint on there. If it's streaky, that's fine. Because what you're going to need to do is, as Duncan says, multiple thin coats because you'll build the color up. So this is absolutely fine. And I'm just going reasonably gently. I'm not pushing down with the brush, or putting lots of pressure on. I'm just gently brushing it on. So that's the first coat and it looks pretty terrible, but that's fine. So I'm gonna let that dry for a minute. If you need to, with the Citadel paint, you can just blast them with the hairdryer for five or 10 seconds and they'll dry perfectly. So let me go and do that and then we'll do the next coat. Okay, one quick blast with the hairdryer, literally about sort of 10 or 15 seconds. Now I'm ready to go with the next coat. Uh, and that's the beauty of these paints, they dry really fast. So again, paint on the brush and just work my way across. Now it will, when it goes on, it will look a little bit brush marky because it's shiny and you can see the raised areas. But again, don't panic. It does level out a certain amount. But just keep the brush flat and just... Ooh, thunder. Massive boom of thunder. Cool. I love thunderstorms. They did say we we're going to get thunder and lightning today. That might put paid to my painting though because I'll have to turn everything off. I'm one of those people that when there's a thunderstorm, I turn all the electrical stuff off. Disconnect it. The wiring in this house is like 80 or 90 years old so if we got a lightning strike every single thing in the house would blow up and we'd all die so yeah, i'm just going across i'm not dabbing i'm not jabbing it's a bit tricky around these convoluted areas i'm trying as best i can to stay in one direction but it's not always possible and then we'll go one more little bit there we go yes the beauty of a wet palette is because you you thin the paint a little bit and it's on wet tissue and wet parchment paper you don't have to keep adding water to the paint as you're dipping into the paint to get more it will just stay hydrated so you do end up using less paint so you can see now that's had its second coat uh, and that probably be fine but I might give it another quick third coat so let me go and dry that with the hairdryer and we'll do a last little third coat back in a moment okay we're back again for the third coat because I've already got mostly green on there, uh, I've added a little tiny bit of water to the paint and I can just afford to lightly go over this now because this is just filling in any gaps where you can still see the primer underneath. So this is really just a quick way of just filling in the little gaps. Um, but yeah, the first, the first coat will look like the worst thing in the world because it's a thin coat and it's going over black primer. The second coat will do all your coverage so you can afford to be a little bit thicker with the paint but again never use paint straight from the pot always dilute it a little bit uh, and this last coat is just a touch up coat just to hide any gap so it can be a little thinner and that is now as i've just stabbed myself with the cocktail stick that is now painted let me just dry it with the hairdryer i'll show you how long it takes to dry with the hairdryer
you go that's now dry with the hairdryer that's how long it takes literally so you've just seen me do this in what about three or four minutes add about 40 50 seconds of hair drying and that's how long it takes to paint a piece not long at all now it's by no means a perfect finish yes there are some brush marks in there but they're only little minor ones you're never going to get an airbrush quality finish when you brush paint unless you just go over with really really thin paint and build the paint up slowly 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 in layers i haven't got the patience to do that uh, but for these base coats it's absolutely fine um, and if you look at you know some of the top end um, brush painted models like the warhammer stuff and miniatures and things you'll often see brush marks because you're always going to get something so i'm really pleased with that that's absolutely fine it's still a little bit shiny because it's not fully dried but it's dry enough to brush over again so i'll need to go off and do the rest of the green parts and when we come back we shall do the orange parts back in a moment okay now we're going to do the orange bits we're going to paint the kneecap part here um, for this we are going to use a color called jocero orange jocero jocero Jacaro orange that's my pronunciation it's kind of a pale orange uh, which isn't as bright as the kit part but again we're going to do things afterwards like pin washes and things like that so we might darken it down so i've got some in my wet palette I'll get some on my brush now i have discovered just in painting these last parts that you may not actually need to put any water into the paint when you add it to the wet palette if you're using a wet palette just putting the paint on the wet palette because it's wet and sodden is just enough anyway so let's do this part so same again first coat Let's go on reasonably lightly, uh, carefully even, get my words right. Just try and keep it nice and steady. Don't be jabbing, don't be stabbing. Oh, I did a poetry then. I did a poetry. Remember that the first coat's gonna look terrible. Now I don't have to paint inside this. I just need to paint the edges just in case they show. But you can see the difference there that's what the inside looks like and that's the color we're putting on but again like i say we're going to do things to it so you've got a few seconds just to spread the paint out if you want so that's going to do for the first coat so i shall hair dryer this and we'll do the next coat okay second coat get this one on Dee -dee -dee. make sure it's in focus yes yeah, probably not so again going straight in I've not added any water to the paint that's on the palette uh, and I'm, I'm still learning with the wet palette but it does seem to be that if you just put the paint on the palette straight from the pot I know I said in the last section put a little bit of water in there you can do if it's a particularly thick paint like a metallic but with this orange and that green it's actually fine enough just by putting it on the wet palette it thins it ever so slightly and gives you just enough to get a nice smooth coat so have a practice with your wet palette if you've not if you're not painting if you're painting along and you've not done one oh god i'm really having trouble speaking today as always if you're painting along with me and you've not actually got one don't worry you just need to add some water to your paint but if you are using one you might not need to right hair dryer time okay and let's go for the third coat now Duncan always does say two thin coats, but I'm finding three coats is actually giving me a nice coverage of the paint. If I had a white undercoat, a white primer, it may be a little easier. I might not need three coats, but because I've used black, I've got to fight against that a little bit. So I'm just using, I'm putting the paint on then using the flat brush just to smooth it down. That's why this flat brush is quite good for trying to get a smooth finish because you can flatten the paint down now again don't worry if you get if it looks a bit lumpy and bumpy when you're putting it on when it's wet that will flatten out a little bit so don't panic too much and once it's been on there for a few seconds don't start dabbing around with it to try and flatten it out because that will just rook up the paint and that is our finished piece painted orange yeah it's very nice so i'll let that dry it'll flatten out a little bit uh, what's next next is the i think we've only got white to go or the off-white where's the instructions instructions say using words we've got the green we've got the orangey red we've got the cream color oh we've got some gray we've got some gray so i won't show you the white and the gray and everything else because you've seen it now you've seen the orange and the green the, the cream color is going to be exactly the same uh, but for that i'm going to use a base coat of screaming skull it's actually a layer paint 
and a layer paint is slightly more translucent than a base paint so it may take three or four coats of this it's a little bit clearer and more transparent but we're doing it over a white primer so it may not so i'll let you know when i've done it but it's an off-white cream color so we'll do screaming skull for the white parts and for the gray parts we'll do my favorite mechanicus standard gray yes mechanicus standard gray uh, and then that's kind of really the only colors we're going to need for all the base paints i've not done the guns yet i've not assembled the guns we'll do those after we finish the mobile suit um but i'll go and get those other two colors done and when we come back i think we'll start looking at some assemblage so back in a moment okay right all the base color painting has now been done everything is now ready for assembly now i need to talk you through what i did with the head because i painted the head and i can't show that on camera because it's too small i was really close up with tongue sticking out and everything so i couldn't film it uh, and something i discovered about these paints as well in terms of quick fixes so let me move the camera and i'll show you those okay so two things i wanted to show you first of all uh, this piece which is part of the leg um, i discovered once i painted it there was a good big thumbprint from gluing uh, on the side that I hadn't noticed until I painted it and it was rough, horrible rough texture with the fingerprint. I was like, oh, I'm gonna have to sand it down, reprime it and everything else. No, dead simple. The fix took me about 30 seconds. All I did was I got my squishy gray sanding sponge, the one you saw me use in the last episode, the big fat thick one, sanded it till the fingerprint had gone uh, it took off most of the paint, but it was only down to the primer. Uh, and then simply just rebrush the paint on in two thin coats, as Duncan would say. Two thin coats with the big um, base brush, like I did for the rest of the model. And it's now nice and smooth. So what you think might take you a long time, actually took no time at all. And you can see here, the paint on this has actually come out quite nicely. Considering it's brush painted, and it's probably about three coats, if you just do it thin, it's fine. Now I did find to completely contradict what I said in the earlier parts of this video. Take the paint from the pot, put it on your wet palette, if you're using a wet palette, and then just take it straight from there. If you're using the big fat flat brace base, bleh, 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 words, words, big fat base brush, um, don't put too much on, put a little bit on and just spread it around. It will kind of go flat. If you're using a smaller brush like the, like a, a typical pointy brush like this for detail painting, then yes, you want to get a little bit of water on the brush first. Uh, because they are more brush marky when i did the legs where's the leg when i did the legs for these parts around here i used my shade brush it's a medium no it's a medium layer brush even sorry medium layer brush which i think is quite big but i didn't want to use the base brush the big flat one because it will go everywhere so i used the layer brush but i thinned down the paint a bit more with a little bit more water so it was more th it was thinner uh, and brushed that on and did a few coats of that just to build it up and the reason i did that is because if you just do the paint even on a wet palette so you've got the moisture from the wet palette you're still going to get some brush marks it's going to be a bit marky so if you're using a smaller rounder brush like that layer brush or a shade brush or something like that then thin it a little bit more if you're using the base brush you can just use it straight off the wet palette if you're not using a wet palette then yes you want to add a little bit of water to the paint even if you're using the base brush but the legs came out quite nicely i'm quite pleased with that not 100% perfect. Uh, I can see it with my naked eye and look up close. There are some brush marks. It's not absolutely stunningly perfect. The back of the backpack, might, you might not see, but the back of the backpack's a little bit brush marky, but not too much. But once you've got a gloss varnish and weathering and a matte varnish on the top, it'll kind of fade away. So I did go ahead and paint the, uh, the whole head. So I couldn't film it because I was up close and personal with it, so you wouldn't have seen anything. What I basically did was, uh, it was primed as before. It was painted with the Screaming Skull. Uh, then what I did was I went ahead and painted the red part of the raccoon mask It's just a little stripe at the bottom, but I painted it Carefully at this edge at the front edge, but I didn't worry about it going over the eyes and the black part of the mask So I just painted that on first and for that I used uh, Good old Mephiston red. Yes thinned a little bit with a fine uh, What did I use? I think I used my artificer brush painted that on and then instead of actually painting the black part of the raccoon mask I didn't actually paint it I used Null Oil, which is a shade. And all I did was, I basically got the, where's the brush, where's the brush? I use a bigger brush so you can see it, but I basically got the, it was a very fine artificer brush, and I just touched it to the edges where the black part would meet the red part. 
and because it's a thin shade or a thin wash it just flowed to the edges and stopped so I got a reasonably nice crisp edge once I did about three or four coats of that once that had dried because it dries matte and it dries a bit like to me a rubber black I then went over the eyes with some ceramite white using my artificer brush now you may notice the eyes look a bit googly they're not quite symmetrical and they're not quite lined up I did double check and it's not down to me painting them wrong the actual moulding seems to be a little off the eyes aren't 100% symmetrical they're not perfectly lined up one kind of angles upwards this one points upwards a bit and that one points downwards so it does seem to be an issue with this particular mould whether it's this particular kit or just it's the design of it so yeah it looks a bit googly eyed so I went over that with a, a few coats of ceramite white on the eyes just use my artificer brush and thin the paint down a little bit uh, very carefully if I did go into the black part anywhere not a problem once I'd finished painting the white I just went round again with the uh, null oil just and again it, it goes up to the edge of the eye but because the eyes are raised detail it just goes up to the edge and stops so you get a nice crisp edge anything where I've got a raised detail that I want to paint black around now or a, a recessed detail that I want to paint black I'm going to use null oil and build it up because it's actually really cool then once that had dried, I went over the white eyes with a slightly thinned bit of Tamiya Clear Green X25. I did say I was going to use Citadel, but there may be a few other products I'm going to use, some ammo and some Tamiya, but I did buy brush. Uh, I thinned that down with a little tiny bit of Ultimate Thinner, just so it was not brushy, and it went on quite nice and smooth. You can see it's a bit shiny because it is a gloss colour. Uh, now what we'll do when we've finished everything else and it's all been matte varnish, we'll go over with some gloss varnish on those eyes just to make them bling even more. The reason I painted the white underneath is because the clear white, the clear green is a clear colour. If I painted them just black, it would look really dark. If I'd done them silver, it probably wouldn't be as bright. So it's not as bright as having stickers on there, but I wanted to give it a try painting it. When I finished all that, I just went round the front of the white part of the mask again uh, with the screaming skull just to tidy up the red bit because it was a bit splotchy painted the goatee green same as before the same green and the orange on the front parts and then the camera on the back i am particularly proud of it came out there's a little raised detail around the camera so it's like a little rhombus with a lip around the edge i just again used some thin to me a green clear green uh, thin with a little bit of the thinner and just got my artificer brush and just touched the brush in to the i didn't brush it i just touched the brush in to the hole i loaded it a little bit with the paint touched in and it went and just went right to the edge of the the raised lip and gave me that really nice i don't know if it'll come out but it's that really nice neat rhombus shape it's perfectly painted and that's best camera lens i've ever done i'm really happy with that again it's not particularly glossy but we can do a dot of pledge in there once everything else is done uh, and that's it now the reason i'm wearing gloves is because even though this paint these citadel paints are as tough as nails i spilled some on my desk and i couldn't get it off even with alcohol without really scrubbing uh, when it's actually on the model you will find even with handling it does seem to come off i had to repaint the the sides of the head a little bit because it came off but it came out really well so yes apologies i couldn't show you that um, now what we're going to do next is we're going to get this puppy built Aww. right so that is now all assembled uh, I've not finished doing the head yet because I've just realised I hadn't painted the lens on the front camera so that's been done I've just got to tidy that up because it went a bit everywhere uh, I've left it in these little sub assemblies uh, because what I'll need to do I did notice there was some chippage as I put the legs on very easy to fix it's not a problem at all um, so before I start completely building everything uh, I'll need to do the gloss varnishing I also need to do the shoulders you saw me do the arms so what we'll do i'll clear all this away and we'll sort the shoulders out first i think back in a moment okay time to play with the shoulders now you can see i've gone ahead here and done exactly the same seam filling as i did in the other parts i uh, just put the arm and the sticky out thing in there and squished them together and got this extra thin glue uh, and that's cool however you'll notice it is quite a deep panel line i, I think this is actually a panel line and not a seam so i'm basically filling in a panel line Duh. never mind uh, now one thing I have noticed, and I'll show you how to deal with this in a second, one thing I have noticed is when this is all together, the, these are very, very stiff. And I've also noticed you can't turn the arm. I mean, you can. When you first build it, this elbow, inner elbow part is supposed to be here. Um, but that's going to limit your posing options, so I tried to turn it, and it took so much force just to turn this arm. So I think once this is built, it'll be built with the weapons on his backpack, because unless he can hold the weapons because I can't I don't want to keep turning this at risk in the plastic so yeah this is 
it just doesn't want to turn at all it's terrible I don't know if that's because I've got paint in there or what it might be it's just a nightmare so hmm, I don't know it could be the kit I suppose uh, anyway so we've filled this in uh, and it's still got a massive trench so it's dead easy to fix I'm going to use uh, standard Tamiya cement however you can use CA glue cyanoacrylate or super glue I've got a really itchy nose I got oh scratchy scratchy oh itchy nose it usually tells me I need to trim my beard because it's tickling my nose so it's very easy all we do I'm going to use this like I say you can use super glue or CA glue uh, you can use filler but I really can't be bothered using filler because it's the right pain in the backside so I'm going to get the CA the thick cement and all we're going to do is quite simple we're going to get the glue and we're going to be quite generous we're just going to blop it on over the seam line being very careful to stay away from the edges where there's parts inside that need to pivot and turn so I'm going to blop this on blop 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 now what may happen is it may actually just sink into the little trench but that's fine that's fine at this point it's not a problem so you can see now that's made a bead of glue over the, the little seam line if I hold it in camera hello so I'm going to put this to one side I'm going to leave it for a good two or three hours and then see how we come out okay right the glue has had a few hours to dry and as you can see yeah, it's uh, <clears throat> still got a big groove in there it's quite a deep groove now I could go over and put more of that glue on um, but I'm going to try something a bit more drastic again I don't want to use fillers because well I'm lazy let's just be honest um, and fillers I've never quite got the hang of thinners so what I'm going to do instead is get even more hardcore and use some CA glue cyano cyanoacrylate or super glue uh, this is some thick glue apparently I think I kind of wrote it on and then scrolled it out uh, any super glue will do this is Javis super glue I got from e models uh, but you know anything will do uh, if you can get one in a dropper bottle now you can see how this bottle is all cloudy and fuzzy and horrible yeah that's what CA glue does if you put it on clear parts that's why you don't want to use super glue on clear parts and it's why I only really use super glue as a filler because whenever I use it it always goes frosty and cloudy and looks terrible when I use it to glue things so yeah anyway what we're we going to do well dead straightforward all we're going to do is basically fill it now I'm not going to be careful and delicate I'm not going to put this on with a cocktail stick or all that nonsense no I'm just slapping it on I've pushed this bit forward so it's away from the edge so I don't glue it by accident and I'm just going to quite simply get a bead of super glue on there again I'm not being careful or delicate or really anything like that the focus here is just to get this seam filled this gap so that's all I'm going to do again I'm just making a bead over that seam line now the reason I'm using CA glue you would use fillers if you want to use fillers because they're solid and they would just make a bead over it and dry that way and then you sand them back uh, I tried the thick glue but it settled into the into the groove so now I'm trying this stuff uh, the reason I'm using the CA glue is because yes it will seep into the into the little groove but hopefully it'll have dried enough before it gets to all seeping all the way in that when it's fully dried it'll cover up the groove altogether so when I sand this back it will sand down and we'll have a nice flat surface the groove will be completely filled with all the different glues uh, and then when I prime it it'll hide so I need to go and leave this to dry now this is probably supposedly drying about was it say on the bottle uh, it says nothing okay it says allow to cure brilliant just don't bother telling me how long um usually it's I'll, I'll leave it for an hour or two anyway i'll probably leave it for tonight i'll go and play some destiny for a bit um because it's i don't know what time it's now it's about nine o'clock or something i'll go and play destiny or i'll watch some uh ds9 or something like that but yes so we'll let that dry and hopefully it'll be sandable enough again i say i wouldn't use it too much as a filler uh, just for things like this because it is sort of sandable well, we'll find out how sandable this particular CA glue is when we come to sand it. So, I'll go and let that dry, and when we come back, we'll see how the sanding goes. I'll either sand it or I'll show you the end result. I, I think I've already shown you sanding anyway, so there's no point me showing you again, but I'll show you the end result. If it doesn't work, I'll show you what we do next. I might have to get the filler out. Ugh. 
back in a moment. Okay, right, all the glue has had overnight to dry. And as you can see now, it's flattened down a bit uh, and it looks mighty messy, yes. Now all this white stuff around, this is what CA or super glue does it fogs up plastics. This is just primer, but it's, it's fogged it, it's faded it. And this is why I really don't like using CA glue, especially when a model is painted or on clear parts, because it just does that, and that's why I try not to use CA glue. Now, it's all glued and dried. You can still see the ridge. However, I've already done one of the arms and it came out okay. So what we need to do is file this back now. Now, because this is a big dot of super glue, uh, it would take approximately all the time in the universe to sand with my rough sanding stick first. I'm going to go straight in with the metal file. No idea what grit this file is, so yeah, I don't know. Does it say on it? Uh, no, it's a cheap set from B&Q, I think. So, we're going to go in uh, and we're going to use the metal file as well for two reasons. A, because it's faster and there's a lot to file away. But two, I want to try and keep these nice flat surfaces. Uh, now, with this file, it's rigid, but it's still flexible and I don't want to be doing that. The metal file is obviously solid, so it's going to keep a nice flat surface. So what we're going to do is, the first thing we're going to do is mark it with some paint. And for that, because it's a black or dark coloured surface, I'm going to use some white paint. I'm using ceramite white. It doesn't actually matter what paint you use, as long as you basically just get some paint on there. So all we're going to do is make a guide coat first. Remember, this is your guide coat. This just means you can see where you need to keep sanding. So I'm just going to push that in so it sticks away a bit. And go over all the bits you've glued because you need to file all the glue down so it's flat. There we go. Right, so that's fine. So I need to let that dry for a minute and then we can start the sanding. I'm back in a moment. Okay, the guide coat is dry now, so it's time to go in. So what we're going to do, uh, same as last time, I won't dwell on this too much because you've already seen it, but you've not seen me do that with the file or with this kind of level of glue removal. <clears throat> so apologies if this is out of focus. I keep doing these kind of s shots and scenes. I have to lock my focus and then I never know whether it's here or here or here and then I get carried away. So apologies if it's a bit out of focus. I've also put some tissue down to catch all the stuff that's going to come off. So we're going to take the metal file and we're going to go flat to the surface and we're going to go one direction to start with. Again, we're using this file just because it's going to be faster. Now I'm not pushing down a lot. I'm going fairly gently. And what I'm trying to do, as you see me going from this angle because I'm trying to avoid ruining this edge too much. So we're just going to sand away. And we're going to go back the other way. Now yeah, I'm not pressing down super hard because I don't want to particularly put big massive gouges in there. Okay. So what you can see straight away, like when we did this last time, get my big fan brush of removal you can see here we've got two black strips where the paints come off that's because these are raised up and I've scraped the paint off the white bits here are still there because they're lower down than these black bits so I need to work you can possibly see it there I need to keep working until I get rid of all this paint so I'll probably fast forward this Okay, right, that's now been done, and as you can see, it's looking much smoother. Yeah, there we go. There we go. I did find in my sanding store, my store of sanding sticks, a smaller, thinny stick version of that squishy one, which was most handy for these corners, for this bit here. And to get the glue out of the corner, this little corner piece, uh, I just used my file edge on, because it's got the bit on the side as well. Just used the edge on, and that edged away that gloop in the middle in the corner otherwise you get like a curve so that's all done all that remains now is to mask this puppy off we just need to spray this top bit really we don't need to worry about the sides they're already, they're already primed so we need to do this bit and here so what we're going to do to get ourselves this will be a bit out of focus because i focused on it being here sorry about that 
we get ourselves some tape of the masking Tamiya style zip, zip. Uh, get ourselves our knifey cutty knife knife safety always have the cap on you know what I'm like hi van der zip <laughs> yeah you know what it's like to stab yourself right so what we want to do is we want to mask off the arms obviously this part here and this part here now we don't have to be brilliantly precise or neat with this it the masking on this kit because i'm not going to be using anything that's going to harm the model i'm not going to be doing loads of like washes with enamels and things like that i don't need to worry too much about let's just cut that in half I don't need to worry too much about masking off every single part because I say I'm not going to be doing any like enamel washes. I might do an enamel, enamel pin wash, but I don't need to worry about enamel washes and things like that. So it doesn't matter if I miss a few bits of primer here and there because for this model, because we're brush painting it and we're using mostly harmless water based products, the primer on here is purely for grip to allow the paint to grip to the surface. We're not really so much fussed about protecting the plastic. So I don't have to be precise when I do this. And let me just change the focus for you because I'm doing it kind of here, aren't I? This is what, oh, uh, somebody asked a question about uh, cameras of the day. White balance and focus, I'll talk about it now very briefly. But I won't talk about it too much. Uh, I use this to do focusing on objects if I'm gonna be working here. So if I'm gonna work, say here, I focus like this. I I'm using an iPhone 5, so I just press on the screen and it locks the white balance and the autofocus and everything's nice and cool. Uh, however, if I bring in something white, you can see it's a little bit overexposed. So I can change by focusing on that and it changes that to white. That says this is white, however, now everything else is darker. So I find to lock white balance and focus at the same time, I use my little Tamiya tape dispenser, which I have just for this purpose. There you go, a little bit of learning. Sorry, but a little aside there. So anyway, where were we? Yeah, so we're not worried about protecting the plastic so much with this build, as we are just making sure everything is got primer on so paint sticks. So if I say cover up this bit here, I don't want to protect the arm. It's not the end of the world if I don't get any primer in a little bit of corner. It'll be fine, it'll be fine, it won't be a problem. So that's almost done the arm. Uh, let's try and think about this. But with masking, it's just a case of covering up the stuff you don't want to get paint on. It's, it sounds really obvious to say it, but you'd be surprised how many people don't realise that. It, if I was, if this was going to be have like loads of enamel filters and washes and stuff, I'd be super, super careful masking this off. But it's not going to, so I don't need to worry too much. See, I don't need to go below here because I've already got primer on there. So I can just pop that tape there to cover up that little gap. Sometimes you can do it by just holding it with the knife and sometimes you need actual fingers and thumbs. So that now should mean nothing's gonna get under that tape. Now if anything does go under there, it's not the end of the world. If I do get any primer on these parts, it's not a problem. I can just repaint them. There are some chips on these already from handling because I've not protected this yet. So that's fine. I could just um, touch them in later on. That's not a problem. Okay, so now we need to do this bit. So I'm just cutting the tape into bits. And sometimes it's easier to work with small pieces and build up an area than try and do it all in one go. Now again, you see, I don't have to worry about this bit here. So all I need to worry about, really, is this bit in here, you see? I've pushed this forward, it's got our gap, so I can get tape down there. Spadooge. And Now I'm doing this, actually, I'll be honest with you. I'm doing this and I haven't got my headset visory helmety magnificati thing on. And I've got my reading glasses, which means I'm a long way away and I can't really see much, but you see, even I can do this. Put that there. That's just to cover up the side. So I'm quite, I'm quite pleased with this. I'm 
doing quite well considering I'm about a foot away and I've got my reading glasses on which is designed for close at work and I'm not wearing my space helmet of C. So there you go. So that is, oh that has gone wrong, hooray, let's get rid of that. Uh, while we're doing this just to mention uh, if you're not a member of the model makers boom hut I'll put the URL here oops I'm not the camera uh, face facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash model boom hut do go and join it's a great community lots of uh, people on there it's a, a, a group that myself and the other trios members set up purely for folks like yourself to hang out and oh, it's gone wrong again to hang out and chill out and have a good time uh, show off your work and stuff. We are going to be doing, we haven't announced it yet officially, we're still sorting it all out, but we are going to be doing a Boom Hut build off or group build. Uh, and we're still working out the details, but it's going to be on the theme of eggs. And what we mean by that is things like egg plane kits, egg tanks like the uh, World War II tanks from Meng. And it was all sparked by. Uh, E-Models had the World War II tanks in stock and absolutely sweet. Uh, so egg planes, egg tanks. We're including, if you're a Gumpler builder, we're including super deformed Gumpler because they're technically egg, sort of. It all falls into the same category. Uh, and there will be prizes. Don't expect too much, there'll be dumbass prizes. But it's all fun. We haven't announced it yet, so if you're not in the treehouse, the uh, treehouse, <laughs> you're not going to be in the treehouse. If you're not in the boom hut, do go along and join. If for no other reason than just it's fun, it's a fun place. Did it right now for this edge. We don't need to do the, this face here. We just need to do the top. So what I'm going to do is put a bit of tape here that sticks up just above like that. It protects the sides. Don't worry about that bit. It's just a little bit short there, so we can do a second piece. I'm going to squish that in so it's in place. I'll do a second little bit just to tidy it up. Now I'll miss completely. Hooray. Yeah, so I should be wearing my space helmet, shouldn't I? Yeah. This is probably the least exciting thing in the world to watch. Jam that in the corner miss completely there these are tweezers i suppose wouldn't it we get some tweezers where are my tweezers is there are my tweezers so yeah go along and join the boom hut it's all jolly good fun yeah be get in right so you get the idea now i don't need to do the whole thing in front on the camera you get the idea so what we're going to do i'm going to do the same on this piece here to cover that side. I'm going to do the same on the back here to cover this. Um, and then here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some tape around here. I'm going to get some cheap crappy 3M blue tape, it's not that cheap, uh, and get a piece of newspaper and put the newspaper so it comes down here like this to then seal off the entire underside. Let's see if I'm trying to flat the surface. So what I'll do is once that's all taped off, I'll wrap a piece of newspaper around here like that. And that'll make a newspaper tube to protect off the underside. So the only exposed bit really is going to be this and that. And everything else is covered by the tape or the paper. The reason I'm going to use this tape is because it's um, cheaper than it's cheaper than using my expensive Tamiya tape. Uh, and the reason I'm putting this tape down first is this tape is quite hardcore and it might pull the paint off. So I'm only actually going to stick this blue tape on top of Tamiya tape, not on top of paint. It's just a lot faster than using loads and loads of Tamiya tape. I can use one piece of tape and stick it on there. So I'll go and get this masked off. I'll do the other one. Uh, and then I'll go and get some primer on here. Uh, and when we come back, I will have either, I'll show you painting this, but I've already shown you painting. It's exactly the same technique. Or we'll have done this. We'll get the thing put together. And then we're ready for the next stage then, which is the, you know, the, the weathering and things like that. So let me go and do this. Back in a moment. Okay, right, apologies. Uh, I've gone ahead and painted the shoulders. Now, unfortunately, it didn't come out. The video was corrupted, so I can't show you that. It's, it's just a thing that happens with iPhone video files sometimes. Yes, I know, I'm using an iPhone. Oh, well. Anyway, yes, that's all been painted. 
Uh, there's a little bit left to do I can show you. Uh, what I've gone ahead and done, painted it all green. Uh, as before, I used the Castellan green. Do it on camera, dear. Castellan green. Uh, this part, a little trim under here, and inside the missile pod uh, was done with, you know what it is, Mechanica standard grey. And then inside the thruster here at the back, and the tips of the missiles was done with Evil Sun Scarlet. Uh, again, all brush painted. For that, I used my uh, medium layer brush. Got into a nice point and went in and painted them. Always good to use a bigger brush than you think, like for painting these little bits here. You could use a fine artificer brush or a very fine pointy brush, but you might get little brush marks. It's better to use a slightly bigger brush and just touch it in and you get some nice coverage of paint there. So that's all been done. Touched up a few chips on the arms and on here. Now, uh, one thing I do need to do, I wanted to just clean up this rim here. As you can see, I've painted inside red, inside this thrust at the back. I want to get that effect you get on Gumpler where you have red interior to the rocket motors or to the thrusters so i've painted inside with the evil sun scarlet we're going to make the square bit on the f on the base of it the square floor black later on or dark uh, but i just need to tidy up this line i literally just got the brush in there i went like that and got the red on there two or three coats uh, just to get it up the side so i need to tidy that up so what we will do is we'll get some of our castellan green i will move these out of the way so i don't get paint on them i'll put some on my wet palette uh, as I said in the last video, I think earlier on, always use a crappy old brush for getting your paint out. So I'll get a little bit on my wet palette, just a touch. Uh, and now what I shall do is I shall take my, uh, what was it, a medium layer brush? Medium layer brush. I'll get a little bit of green. I'm not adding any water to the paint. I don't need to be too thin. Actually, no, I'll add a tiny amount of water, just a tiny touch to the paint. I'll make sure the brush has got a good, nice point on it. And what we're going to do, I'm going to get a bit more paint up the side of the brush than usual. Because what we're going to do, we're going to do effectively an edge highlight. We just need to catch the top of this edge. So what I'm going to do is quite simply get the brush at that angle and run it along. And that should give me a reasonably nice straight edge. Oops, and that, and that gives me, looking pretty good, a nice straight edge. The reason you do it like that is if you do it like this, you're going to get the brush going down inside and everything else. Do it this way to the edge, and it's only going to go along the edge. And there you get this nice crisp edge on there. So what I need to do is do that on the other one, uh, and then once that is done, I'll loosely put it together and we'll call this episode done. I'm going to do the same thing on the backpack. Have I got the backpack? I've done the same on the backpack. I've filled in the thrusters on the back red. So what I'll do is exactly the same technique on here, but I'll use the Mechanica standard grey to go over those edges to square them off. And again, we'll make the, the interior of them black later on. So let me go and finish doing these and then we'll call this episode done. Back in a moment. All right, here he is all assembled. I've not put the covers on the missile racks yet because I think they're going to be scrapey, scrapey, so I just want to put them on and leave them. Uh, but you can see he's all assembled. There's still a lot to do yet. This is just quite literally the base colours we've done. Um, but I'm quite pleased. Only little. Look at my hand. See, he's only tiny. He's only little. Little, wee, wee little fella. Uh, but yeah, I'm quite pleased. This brush painting malarkey seems to be working quite well. There are brush marks. It's not airbrush perfect. The cream screaming skull colours come out really nice. And I think once you've got, you know, gloss coat on and weathering and then a matte coat, it should dull down any visible brush marks anymore. But yeah, I'm really pleased with the way it's come out so far. Uh, now there is a lot to do. Uh, we need to get him all glossed up, uh, get some decals on him, get some weathering done, do some edge highlighting and things like that. We are going to venture away from the work of the Warhammer stuff a little bit. We'll do some edge highlighting where it's appropriate, I think. We'll try that. But we're going to do some st traditional standard weathering. We'll do, you know, panel lines with maybe uh, an oil f a pin wash or an enamel pin wash or something like that. I was debating whether to do a gunk wash, but I don't think I will. Um, we've still got to do bring back the metallics so once everything's been done and once he's been matte coated we'll do a dry brush over the metallics very carefully with maybe some Tamiya chrome silver um, so there is a lot still to do 
decals i've got to go and find some decals for him i haven't got any specific for this kit so we'll just make some up these two little circular things here i've got to when everything's been weathered i need to paint them white and then a clear yellow to give that kind of i think they're like little lights headlights and crotch lights i don't understand that uh, so we'll get those sorted out but yes i'm quite proud of it uh, the two arms on the back you notice i painted them gray and kept these bits metallic uh, they do have little tabs that go into the holes on the backpack for when the weapons are stowed on the back I'm going to have to take the paint off though so they go in and out otherwise it's going to make a mess um, so what i might do i'll either do that or what i may well do is just put them in and leave the weapons on the back because of the limitations of the arms because although i can bend the arms fine i can't turn them that way very easily at all and they've only got a limited range of movement i think it's because i painted the rod that goes down the middle uh, i know next time i don't need to do that but it's just jammed up you can't move them it takes so much effort you're at risk of damaging or breaking something so what i may do is just stick the weapons on his back and they'll have to do like that it'll have to be the way it is so yes so that's gonna do it for this episode in the next one we'll start the gloss varnishing pin washing weathering and all that kind of stuff not quite sure how we're gonna do that yet but i am really pleased with the brush painting if you haven't got an airbrush uh, and if you're wanting to do gumpler or any model but especially gumpler give brush painting a go like i said in the other video if you're going to use tamiya paints it's probably going to look like gash because it's so finicky you have to get the mix so right within us these citadel paints a little tiny bit of water and no problem at all if you're using uh the the uh, what's this one the large base brush for your flat areas you don't potentially need to put any water in the paint if you're using a wet palette it's damp enough on the wet palette and I would recommend a wet palette. If you're using a, a, a traditional rounded brush, like the layer brush or the uh, shade brush or anything like that, then yes, what you want to do is just dip the brush in a little bit of water, tiny bit, and then get some paint from the, from the palette. Perfect. So, yes, I'm, I'm just looking at them now and I'm really pleased with it. Anyway, enough waffle. Let me go away. Uh, like I say, next one we'll do some weathering stuff. We'll start on that. Like I mentioned earlier on, do pop along to the Boom Hut and become a member if you're not one already. It's a real fun times. Uh, and the address is here. Model maker. It's uh, facebook.com forward slash. Now I've got to remember now. Hang on. Model up uh, there. Words. Go along and have fun. It's a great place to hang out. And uh, also do consider supporting me on Patreon if you would like to. Uh, it helps me do more of these videos. I've done a few more of these recently. I've had loads of free time now. So you can support me on Patreon here. Uh, I'm utterly grateful. There are benefits to doing it. So go and have a look. Go and have a look. You don't have to. It's entirely optional. I'm really grateful if you do. But don't worry if you don't. You're still going to get loads of good content from me. I love all of you equally. I don't have a favourite child. Although this thing's coming close quite now. So yes. Anyway, take care of yourselves. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for the next episode. Uh, and until then, go do something cool. Go make something cool. Go eat something cool. Adios amoebas. Ooh, I can hear my, if you have my glove. Ew. That's not a good noise. I wonder if it'll do farting now. I've got a hole in the glove. These are these are cheap Tesco's gloves. They do farting noises sometimes. Can I do them? No, never mind. Anyway, adios amoebas. <laughs>